Hello everybody, this is Anthony from Eccentric Engineer. Today we are going to be showing you around the Nathan 4000C injector in 1.5 inch scale, 1 8 scale. Uh, there is well over a hundred parts in these between the quadrant and the injector, including all the nuts and bolts and everything. And uh, they're quite complicated little pieces inside and out. So we'll uh, show you some things about it and hope you enjoy. So the Nathan 4000 is designed after an on-lifting injector. It is designed to be mounted below the cap and should only be mounted below the cap. But um, the nozzles are the same as the other EE injectors, which is the automatic injector design. So they do create very strong suction so they'll be, they'll be very forgiving. You don't have to let them gravity feed. The priming position really sucks in the water. And um, on the body itself, the water valve is here and there's a very thin wall of metal between the steam and the water chambers. So the water valve tends to not really get heated. Uh, I mean, it will get warm, but it, it won't get nearly to the temperature of this side where there's constant steam pressure. So as long as your tender water is not too warm, you shouldn't have too many problems with the injector itself heating up the water suction line. The quadrant operates both steam and water valves. So uh, for the quadrant to work correctly, when the injector is fully closed, the latch should be roughly somewhere in the middle of that quadrant. The closer you can get it to right in the middle, the better. But by adjusting the screws on the clevises, you can adjust how it closes. The next notch is a prime position. So in this position, the steam will be cracked open. The water valve is wide open. And that's an ideal position to get water drawn into the injector. Uh, and then depending on the pressure, Somewhere, if you're at a full operating pressure, say if you're at 150, um, it'll start forcing water in somewhere in the either the first or second notch. If you're running at a 125 or 130, it'll probably be the third notch where it'll actually start injecting. And then as, as you bring this back, the water valve is actually closing. It won't close completely, but it'll it restricts back quite a bit all the way at the back of the quadrant. So if you're at say 150 PSI and you have your injector running here, if you keep drawing it back, you can actually cut down the delivery rate of the injectors are running. So if you don't wanna be putting in as much water as possible, say you're running on a long flat or downhill, you can just, you can trim it back. So you're putting in about 60 to 70% the amount of water you would be otherwise. So it's a pretty neat little system just like the prototype so let's see it uh, see it in action here I'm gonna open up the quadrant to the first notch this is prime now you can see it's drawing in plenty of water and I'll just open it up until it runs dry we are in the second notch and I can keep I can continue to, to pull this back and you can hear the change It might be hard to hear on the video, but you can hear, hear it changing. The sound changes as, it, as you throttle the water back. So now I've closed the quadrant and I have a little bit of leaking back. Some of that's just the water from inside dripping out and I have a little bit of a leak in my check valve. But the, um, the water valve is shut now. So even if you have a ton of water in your tender putting a bunch of weight on the injector, if that quadrant's closed, the water valve's closed, and you won't accidentally drain all your tender water, which uh, I know happens sometimes to the best of us. Since this is an automatic injector internally, you can just open up, you know, you don't really have to put it in the prime position and wait for it. You can just open it, put it where you want it, you know. Just rip it open and let it go. You know, and like I said, if you're just going downhill or on a long flat, you can pull it back as, as far as you can before it starts to drip. 
So now it's putting in the least amount of water it, it possibly can at this pressure. And then if you start up a hill and you want a little more water, you can bring it back down and now you're actually putting in more water because that, that water valve is further open now. And when you're done, just close it. Might not show up too well in the video, but the quadrant positions are actually engraved. So here we have, it says closed, prime, wide open, and then minimum capacity and right there it says regulation so it's regulating the capacity between those notches the prime position still can be pretty useful if your um, if your feed line does get a little hot or maybe if you have a, a slightly leaky check valve and hot water is is coming into the injector um, maybe it just gets a little bit too warm for some reason if you just put it in that prime position and leave it there, that is the ideal position to uh, to suck in the water. So let's see if I can maybe try to simulate. If I block off the overflow, I'll block the overflow and um, shoot some hot water back through the water line to get it a little bit overheated. So I can show you how how the primer helps. Okay, I have the uh, I have the overflow capped off, so I can show you. I'm kicking steam back. So this is uh, very much overheated right now. And now, let's take this off. Just let that drop because it's very hot. Now we'll put this in prime position and see how long it takes for it to pick up water again. Not very long at all. So the prime position is uh, pretty bulletproof in my opinion. See now we're down to, uh, we're about 75 PSI. So has to come back, I think we're at the fifth or sixth position there. And probably bring it all the way all the way back. Almost all the way back. That's gonna vary depending on um, the length of the valve stem, you know, how far it's screwed in, and also your installation. We'll let the pressure get a little bit lower. We're down to 50 psi now, and at this point, you know, if you're <laughs> If you're out on the main line at 50 PSI, you have other problems, but you can pretty much just rip it all the way back and it'll it'll put in dry. And it should go down to around 40 PSI. Um, if it doesn't, the valve stem on the, on the water valve might need to be screwed up a little bit higher, you know, half a turn or something. But uh, it's, it's pumping away, happy as can be at 50 PSI, it should work it should be able to work all the way down to 30 or maybe even 25, but um, the quadrant, you know, will probably only get you down to about 40 or 45. Uh, it's really hard to get the water valve to and the gap between the valve and the cage that it's in. You know, the volume of water that can pass through there has to be exactly right at these lower pressures. So if you need to get lower than that, you can use a water valve on the tender or something to, to cut it back even finer. But um, the nice thing is, you know, say you're shutting, shutting down at the end of the day and you just want to open it up and, and put water in until the injector quits working. As long as you leave it open, it should keep working all the way down to, say, 25 PSI. It's, um, it's, if you shut it off, if you get down to 35 and you shut it off and then and open the quadrant again, it may not start. But if it's going, it should keep going until it can't go anymore. So uh, I'm very happy with these. Unfortunately, they are sold out. Um, uh, I got a pair here that, that are going out today to a customer in Wisconsin. But um, I can't wait to see these on some engines. And if you're getting one, I, I hope you're really, I hope you're as happy with them as I am. So thanks for watching.